I will give thee as a for a light to the Gentiles. That thou mayest see thy salvation to the end of the earth. Let us pray. Almighty God, God under to whom all hearts are open, all, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of my Holy Ghost, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. And the second is like it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Kiri eleison. Christe eleison. Kiri eleison. Glory be to God on high, and on and on earth, earth peace, peace goodwill towards men. men. We, we praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, not only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, Thou that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Give us grace, O Lord, to answer readily the call of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and proclaim to all people the good news of his salvation, that we and the whole world may perceive the glory of his marvelous works, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament lesson today is from the third book, third chapter of the book of Jeremiah, beginning at the 19th verse. I said, how would I set you among my sons and give you a pleasant land, a heritage most beautiful of all nations? And I thought you would call me my father and would not turn from following me. Surely, as a treacherous wife leaves her husband, so have you been treacherous to me. O house of Israel, declares the Lord, a voice on the bare heights is heard, the weeping and pleading of Israel's sons, because they have perverted their way, they have forgotten the Lord their God. Return, O faithless sons, I will heal your faithlessness. Behold, we come to you, for you are the Lord our God. Truly, the hills are a delusion, the orgies on the mountains. But from our youth, the shameful thing has devoured all for which our fathers labored, their flocks and herds, their sons and their daughters. Let us lie down in our shame, let our dishonor cover us. For we have sinned against the Lord our God, we and our fathers, from our youth even to this day. And we have not obeyed the voice of our Lord God. This is the word of the Lord. 
Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. The psalm for today is Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let, Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleas for mercy. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? But, but with you there is forgiveness, that you may be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than the watchman for the morning, more than the watchman for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is plentiful redemption. And he will redeem Israel from all his iniquities. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The New Testament lesson is from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, beginning at the 17th verse of the 7th chapter. Only let each person lead the life that the Lord has assigned to him and to which God has called him. This is my rule in all the churches. Was anyone at the time of his call already circumcised? Let him not seek to remove the marks of circumcision. Was anyone at the time of his call uncircumcised? Let him not seek circumcision. For neither circumcision counts for anything nor uncircumcision, but keeping the commandments of God. Each one should remain in the condition in which he was called. Were you a bondservant when called? Do not be concerned about it. But if you can gain your freedom, avail yourself of the opportunity. For he who was called in the Lord is a bondservant, as a bondservant is a freedman of the Lord. Likewise, he who was free when called is a bondservant of Christ. You were bought with a price. Do not become bondservants of men. So brothers, in whatever condition each was called, there let him remain with God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. Glory be to thee, Lord, Lord Christ. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God, saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Passing alongside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on a little farther, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were in their boat mending the nets. And immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to thee, thee Lord Christ. Christ.
Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Amen. Amen. From 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 24. So brothers, in, in whatever condition each was called, there let him remain with God. In this hyper-political age, we are confronted with many devices, divisive issues. Abortion, homosexuality, to name just two. There were divisive issues in early Christianity as well. And St. Paul talks to us about two of them in today's epistle. Slavery and circumcision. A wise man once said that a person can be a Christian no matter what condition he is in. For the rich and the poor, the sick and the healthy, for the hungry and the well-fed, for the conservative and for the liberal, the rules of Christianity apply to all. In whatever state we are, we are called to let our Christian light shine forth and to be a credit to our Lord. What St. Paul is telling us in today's epistle is that we as Christians should be content with our place in life and we should conduct ourselves accordingly. Our comfort our happiness depend on what we are to Christ, not what we are in the world. No one should think that his or her Christianity makes them better than they are. Indeed, we should be quietly content as we are, because that is how God made us. In today's epistle, St. Paul addresses not just the two issues mentioned previously, but also the people whom God has placed in those conditions, such as the slaves and the uncircumcised. Slavery, a dirty word in our country. We fought a civil war to get rid of slavery. But slavery in, in, in biblical times was quite different from slavery in the South before the Civil War. Slavery was in fact the bottom rung on the social order, but for the most part it provided generally well for up to one third of the population in a city like Corinth or Rome, 33% slaves. Some of these slaves had been taken captive in battle some were slaves because they were descendants of slaves. And as strange as it may seem, there were even Israelites who were so poor that they had to submit, voluntarily or not, to slavery to satisfy their creditors. Still, slaves had considerable freedom and their situation was often mutually beneficial with their master. The owner, of course, received the benefit of their slave services, and the slave had the security of a steady job, including having all his or her basic needs met. Indeed, for many, slavery was preferable to being a freed man because as a freed man, there was little security. They did not know where their next meal would come from, where their clothing would come from. Slaves did not have that problem. But there was one thing that was lacking for the slaves. In the final analysis, he did not belong to himself, but to another. 
The second issue that Paul discusses is circumcision. We know that circumcision was a sign of the covenant between Abraham and God. In return for the promise of being the chosen people, Abraham, his family, his slaves, and eventually all Jewish males were circumcised. The earliest Christians were all Jews. And even as believers in the Lord Jesus, they still considered themselves to be Jews who had a covenant relationship with God. That relationship was symbolized by circumcision as God had commanded Abraham. So it was only natural, they thought, that they would expect all new believers to follow the Old Testament covenant requirements and to be circumcised. And that was okay until the church began to reach beyond a Jewish audience and into the Gentile world. At that time, requiring Gentile converts to become circumcised became a point of contention. The issue was whether or not someone could be a Christian without circumcision. After much discussion, the Council of Jerusalem in 50 AD affirmed the message of Peter and Paul that God's grace extends to Gentiles as Gentiles. In other words, circumcision was deemed as unnecessary to be part of the church. Paul's words about circumcision and uncircumcision being nothing have big cultural implications. As one writer puts it, Paul's first application of his principle can be summarized like this. Paul would say to the new early Christian, if you were converted as a Gentile, don't try to become a Jew. If you were converted as a Jew, don't try to become a Gentile. And if Paul were with us here today, masked and socially distanced, he would say, if you are black, don't try to become white. If you are white, don't try to become black. If you are Mexican, don't try to become American. And if you are American, don't try to become Mexican. In other words, putting on Christ does not require you to change who you are. However, as it was still the early days of the church and people were still working out the, what effect Jesus is coming would have on Jewish Christians, some of these Jewish Christians were going about making other Christians evangelism, especially the non-Jewish converts, feel like perhaps they needed to adopt the Jewish traditions and heritage if they wanted to be full-fledged Christians. These were the uncircumcised who were seeking to be circumcised. I find the opposite to be a little bit strange as I was doing my work my work on this sermon, there were people on the other side of this who were formerly Jewish and who understood the impact of Christ only too well. And for that reason, they were seeking to hide or mask their Jewishness and in effect disdained their former heritage. These were the circumcised who were seeking to be uncircumcised. A pretty good trick, if you ask me. Um, to both of these categories of people, Paul says, remain as you are. 
or rather remain as you were when God first called you to himself in Christ Jesus. If you were circumcised, great. If you were uncircumcised, great. These things are an irrelevance now. What really matters is keeping God's commands. There are two final questions for us to consider. First, according to Christianity, what are we to God? We know what God is to us. What are we to God? Children, we are God's creation, his children, made by his own hand. In Genesis 1, verse 26, we read, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Surely this statement affirms the fact that God does not need to affirms the fact that God, God does not need us to change who we are or to change how we are or were when he called us. Finally, God crowned us with glory. We are his masterpieces. Changing our circumstances is not necessary. All we need is to be ourselves, just like God made us. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, please help us to realize that when you created us in your image, you created us as you wished us to be. Some of us have faults. None of us are perfect. But help us to realize that you love us just the way we are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us stand and confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, eternally begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was born of the Holy Ghost, Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. 
and I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and for the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. We beseech thee also so to lead the nations of the world into the way of righteousness, and so to direct and dispose the hearts of all our leaders, especially Joseph, our president, that thy people may enjoy the blessings of freedom and peace. Grant that our leaders may truly and impartially administer justice upholding integrity and truth to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, and especially to thy servants, Foley, our Archbishop, Alberto, our Bishop, Tom, our priest, and Deacon Tom, that they may both, by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, rightly and duly administering thy holy sacraments. And to all people give thy heavenly grace, especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Prosper, we pray thee, all those who proclaim the gospel of thy kingdom among the nations, and strengthen us at St. Mary's to fulfill the Great Commission, making disciples of all nations, baptizing them and teaching them to obey all that thou hast commanded. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially those on our parish prayer list. For those fighting cancer, Jody, David, Alan, Sherry, Penny, Doug, and Archbishop Ben Kwame, for those in need of uplifting prayer, Barb, Merivin, Jesse, Father Larson, Betty, Bruce, Talia, Bonnie, Jerry, Jonas, Alan, Kathy, Carl, Michael, Jim, Lois, Russ, Sarah, Joan, Danielle, Debbie, Kevin, Naomi, Rachel, Carolyn, Gary, 
and the people of Trinity Rock Island. And for those in long-term care, especially Grace, Carol, Marilyn, and the residents at Hollybrook and South Park. For the church's ministry in Nepal, especially for Mahendra, Dipendra, Reshma, Tirtha, Purna, their families and churches, and the Transformation Spiritual Church and its pastors. And for the growth of St. Mary's Anglican Mission and St. Peter's in Canton. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. We remember before thee, O Lord, all thy servants who have departed this life in thy faith and fear, especially Janine and Terry, that thy will for them may be fulfilled. And we beseech thee to give us grace, so to follow the good examples of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary and all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Grant these our prayers, O Heavenly Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end, Amen. Amen. O God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your Son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth that in your good time all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life to the honor and glory of thy name through jesus christ our lord amen almighty god our heavenly father who in his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, 
but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul saith. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. The peace of the Lord be with you. And peace. also with you. Peace. Peace, Kathy. Ascribe to the Lord the glory to his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For all that is in heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. All things come of thee, O Lord. And, and of thine own, own have we given thee. thee. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with thy spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them up, up unto the Lord. the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is, it is meet and right so, so to do. do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who in the substance of our mortal flesh 
manifested forth his glory that he might bring us out of darkness into his own glorious light. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and an institute and in its holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and of thine almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Ghost these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When he had given thanks, he gave us my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body in him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. And 
and although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven how would be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Paschal Lamb is offered up for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! We do not presume to come to this side table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be white clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have, have mercy, mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have, have mercy, mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, grant, grant us thy peace. The gifts of God for the people of God.
the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living, living God, God, we you most heartily thank thee for that thou dost vouchsafe to, to, to feed us who have, have really received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy, thy Son, our, our Savior, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. And dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us. 
and that, that we, we are very members at core of the body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Before we close, a brief announcement. Um, I need, Sylvia and I need to go to Galesburg on Wednesday because uh, I will be uh, participating in the funeral of my dad's cousin. And so I will be in the office on Thursday this week instead of Wednesday. Um, Go in peace and shine your light for the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia.